Hi guys, so today I have a super exciting video. I feel like I say that every single introduction, but I am very excited for this topic because we're going to be covering viral gourmand fragrances. You heard that right. I am going to be talking about and giving you guys my opinion on some viral gourmand scents that I have seen going around TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, you name it. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to give you guys my thoughts and opinions and whether I personally like them and if I think they're worth it. Of course, fragrance is subjective, but I want to give you guys my opinion. So this fragrance right here is a newer launch and ever since it launched, I have seen nothing but this scent going around social media. It is Bake from Acro. If you don't know this, uh, Acro is the brand of the master perfumer Olivier Cresp from Ferminish. And I, I really love what he does. I think he has a very cool concept with his brand of working around different addictions and bake is the sugar addiction. I smelled this fragrance earlier this year when I went to Milan for a fragrance exhibition. I actually met Olivier Crest, which was really cool. I have met him in the past, but he's just such a nice person. And he introduced me and Pierre to the two new fragrances mm. that they launched and bake was one of them. And when I smelled it in Milan, I was immediately in love with the scent. This is a stunning gourmand fragrance that has that citrus gourmand DNA. So it feels very balanced. It's not overly sweet, so it doesn't feel too much like food because you guys know me, I'm not a fan of gourmands that smell too much like food. I love gourmand fragrances. I always have and I always will. But at some point I have to draw the line and I don't want to smell too much like a, a piece of food. Do you know what I mean? Like I like my gourmands to be sweet, but not overly. So the reason that I love this fragrance so much is because it has that beautiful contrast of citrus and sweetness. So what you have and how I would describe the scent is a limoncello cupcake, a limoncello cupcake. It has that bitterness, that kind of zest, that almost something a little bit yeah, like bitter about it. But then you also have that delicious kind of creamy vanilla cupcake in the base. And it's just incredible, you guys. So I definitely rate this one. It's a fantastic gourmand with fantastic longevity and projection. On my skin, I get around eight hours of really good wear with a minimal projection. So if you guys were wondering my opinion of Acro Bake, I think it's great. I have to be honest though, I'm not in my gourmand era of life. I do really love sweet fragrances and sometimes I'm craving them, but I think that my taste is going elsewhere these days. Like I'm not wanting to smell super, super, super sweet unless the occasion calls for something super sweet. Oh my gosh. My dogs guys are like babies. This is Pasties, if you guys remember him. They are like babies and it's exhausting. Like it's exhausting. I'm a mom. Like I, I am a full on mother. Pasties is like over two years old now, but he's this breed of dog, Dachons, they are so needy. Like I have these small filming chairs, like small chairs, sorry, in my filming room, like my perfume room. And they're small, like you can only fit one person, like one person on these chairs, but my dogs insist on sitting on the chairs with me because they have to be with me at all times. And it's, I have to move out of the way for him. They're very uh, high maintenance dogs. All right, I think I'm gonna talk about this fragrance next because it kind of corresponds to the last fragrance that I just spoke about. You guys, I got this fragrance two days ago and I smelled it just recently when I was coming back from a trip. I smelled it at the airport and I fell madly in love with it, like madly in love with it. Let me say what it is. This is Dolce & Gabbana Devotion. And I smelled it because I love to go to the airport and smell the new releases. For some reason, it's just like a ritual for me. Every time I'm at the duty free, I have to smell the new releases. So I went over and smelled this one and I was shocked. I was shook. Does everyone say shook anymore? I don't know, I was shook. And the reason was because I just wasn't expecting this scent. Like I just wasn't expecting it. I was expecting to pick up my Tessa strip and smell another fruity floral. Fruity florals are all the rage. They have been for the last few years. So I was expecting it to be a sweet fruity floral, like Lanta D vibe. 
not at all you guys this is incredible so pay attention right now devotion from dolce and gabbana all right i forgot to tell you the the coolest thing i actually got this fragrance in pr i cannot believe it this is my first time ever getting a dolce and gabbana fragrance in pr and the day that it arrived it was like a day after my trip so it was like destiny because when i smelled it at the airport i i knew that i was in love with it and i wanted to pick up a bottle and then I got a PR package. So it was like destiny, you guys. And I'm so happy about it. Yeah. I love this, you guys. Now, devotion to me smells like a lemon orange creamy pie. Like a citrus pie. And I just have to say something. Olivier Cresp, this is his brand. This is his fragrance. Olivier Cresp, he also created this fragrance for Dolce & Gabbana. They're kind of similar, you guys. Like, they are definitely... They are definitely similar. So if... I don't know, I just... I, I, I don't even know if I should say that, but I'm putting the word out there to you guys. If this is too expensive, maybe this is going to be good for you. Because honestly, I love... Love devotion. Like, I love it. I might even love it more than I love bake. Don't, don't say it because I, what I like more about Devotion actually is that it's not as sweet. It's not as gourmand, but it still is a gourmand. It's so good, you guys. You have the citrus in the top. You have a beautiful orange blossom note that doesn't smell too prominent. Like it definitely doesn't give the fragrance a super floral aspect. It more just brings like a little bit of like an orangey essence to the fragrance. And then you have vanilla. So it's creamy. It's sweet. It literally smells like a, a lemon kind of orangey creamy pie. And it's just... It's just delicious, you guys. Like, absolutely delicious. Like, really, I was so shocked when I smelled this fragrance. I was not expecting it at all. Now, I do want to say I've only worn the scent one time. So I cannot tell you too much about the longevity. But I did get pretty good longevity. Around seven hours with a minimal projection. And it definitely holds on to your clothes for quite some time. So, like I said, if you like this, you're going to like this. And if you like this, you're going to like this. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? And also, if you don't like overly sweet gourmands, go for devotion. And if you want something super, super sweet, go for bake. Next up, you guys, we're going to talk about Angel Share from Killian. Angel Share, you guys, I... This is such like a viral scent, like, and everybody loves it, but for a good reason. And I remember the first time I smelled this fragrance, I was in Paris and I got a sample, like, just before it was released, actually. And I hated it. Like, I absolutely hated it. And also, I think that I, at that time, maybe I wanted to be, like, go against the grain in a way. So I just kind of told myself, like, I absolutely hated it. But in reality, this is an incredible fragrance and I'm so happy to have it. I... Actually, the time that my opinion completely changed on the scent was when Pierre wore it. He mixed it with Aunt Oud from Obvious and we went for like a little date night at a beautiful restaurant and he wore it and that night I ate him. Angel Share is this incredible like spicy, ambery, like like apple pie. Like it smells like a cinnamon apple pie in the best way possible. It's a little bit boozy, ambery, spicy, sweet. It's incredible, like absolutely incredible. You do have to like sweet fragrances, but like I said, there is gourmand and then there is gourmand. And I do have a few gourmand scents in this video, but Angel Share is like the perfect amount of gourmand. It's very sweet, but it has more going on to make the scent a little bit more complex, a little bit more complete. I just love it, you guys. I recommend this one for the fall and winter because it is a little bit too sweet to wear during the summer and the spring. But in the fall and winter, spray away your life with this one. It is incredible. It's so addictive. It's so sexy. And for me personally, it's a completely unisex fragrance. I think it depends on your taste. But whenever I smell this fragrance, I feel like it's a perfectly unisex scent. So love it. It's a beast mode fragrance. Longevity and projection is fantastic. Around the eight hour mark with a really big projection. It's incredible. It's popular for a reason. It's viral for a reason. And yes, I totally recommend Angel Share. Even in 2023. I think it came out around three years ago now. I still recommend it to this day. And you guys, I tried Killian Smoking Hot. 
It's so good as well, you guys. Like, it's very sweet. Like, very sweet. I think it reminded me of, like, a grape shisha or something. It definitely has a shisha vibe, but it is incredible. Let's go to this one. This is Jusse Accident à la Vanille Crème de la Berry. Now, I did speak about this in, like, a TikTok viral fragrances, and I said that I feel like this one is a little bit too foodie-like. I still stand by that comment. This, for me... I like it, like I, it definitely doesn't smell bad to me by any means, but it's just not something that I see myself wearing that much. It is nice, like I, I really mean it guys, it's a nice scent, but for me it just smells, like I don't want to tear the fragrance apart because it's not terrible by any means, but it's just, just a little bit like childish in a way, like it smells like strawberry milk. Like it's not, it's not really my vibe. Strawberry milk. It's sweet, it, it also kind of reminds me of like a muesli bar that I used to eat when I was a child. A little bit like Floraiku One Umbrella for Two, like it could be in the same universe as that scent. But yeah, for me this one smells a little bit too like much like strawberry milk and it's not necessarily what I want to smell like at 25 years old. So I'm not saying I'll never wear it because there has been occasions where I've spritzed this one on me, whether it's for bed or whether it's when I've wanted to like cozy up on the couch and watch a bit of Netflix. I have worn it, but it's just not the sort of scent that I see myself wanting to go out of my house wearing. Like I don't want to be defined by this fragrance. So for me, I'm sorry you guys, this one is a no from me. Italica from Casamirati. Now, guys, TikTok girlies are obsessed with Casamirati. Like, they are obsessed with Zerjoff as well, but I really noticed TikTok girlies, they love Casamirati. Like, they're obsessed. And a lot of them love and hype up Italica, which definitely is the most gourmand from Zerjoff and Casamirati. Italica is one of the most gourmand fragrances that I have. Whoa, it's so strong, you guys. Like, oh my gosh, this is so potent. So potent, you guys. And I don't know if I've mentioned it in the past, but I really like Italica. It is a very well-executed gourmand scent. Like, you can smell the quality in this fragrance. It's very sweet. It has, I think, a milky note, a toffee note, a saffron note. It's very like very intense in your face, but, but it's a little too gourmand for me, actually, you guys. I think it's as well kind of pairing the fact that the scent is also extremely strong. For me, it's just that tiny bit too much gourmand for me. So I have to pass on Italica, even though if I lived in a very cold climate, like if I lived somewhere where the winters were very cold, maybe it started snowing, I think then I would start to appreciate Italica more. But because I live in Dubai and I just, I just cannot bring myself to wearing Italica because I think I would feel so ill. I did actually bring it on a ski trip that I went on last year to Austria and it did smell really good on that ski trip in the cold weather. It really broke through that cold weather and made you feel like warm and cozy. So I think because I live in Dubai, that's a big reason why I don't love the scent, but it is a very well done gourmand fragrance. So I am telling you guys, if you're a gourmand girly and you love super, super, super sweet fragrances, you must try Italica because it's definitely one of the best, like, well-executed gourmand scents that I've tried. It has a very prominent note of bitter almond. You also have, I think, toffee and a milkiness, so it has a creamy vibe overall. It is really good. It also has something a little bit like sandalwoody, so it, I think that that kind of contributes to that creamy factor. It is a really good scent. It's beast mode. It lasts on the skin around 10 hours plus with a huge projection. But like I said, like I said, just for me personally, again, maybe it's because of where I live. It is not for me. Italica, she's beautiful, but she's just not for me. Intense Cafe from Montal. This one is also really, really popular, especially, well, actually on all social medias, Intense Cafe is super popular. And at this point, this fragrance is a staple. Like you guys should all know this fragrance. You should all have sniffed it at least one time because it is an iconic fragrance within the community. And for a good reason, the price, the scent itself, the longevity, 
everything is very good when it comes to Intense Cafe. I do have to say I prefer the Ristretto Intense Cafe, which is also quite a viral gourmand scent, but this DNA, you guys, this sweet rose vanillic scent is so popular. Like, I am so sick of smelling this DNA. Intense Cafe, Roses Vanille, Gentle Fluidity Gold from MFK, uh, Kayali, Pink Diamond, Pink Pepper, whatever. The, all of these fragrances, they have this DNA. And actually, you guys, because I live in Dubai, I get the chance to smell a lot of the Arabic perfume brands. All of them have their version of Intense Cafe from Montal. So I am just like sick to death of smelling the DNA. I think if I lived in a city, again, maybe it's to do with where I live. If I lived in a city where I never smelled this DNA, like I, it wasn't popular, maybe I would wear it and love it a lot more than I do. But because I live in Dubai, this is like the DNA of Dubai. Like there's a few DNAs, like scent DNAs that really represent Dubai as a city and Intense Cafe is one of them. I don't even get much coffee from Intense Cafe, like I don't really get that coffee note. I mostly get the same sort of vibe as Rose's Vanille, but maybe a little bit darker with Intense Cafe. You get that sweet vanillic rose scent and it's nice, it, it is really nice. I do think it's worth owning, but for me personally, as a person, as an individual, Intense Cafe, for me, it's one of the most basic DNAs where I live, so I just can't see myself really wearing it that much. Um, but it's still a good scent, so I still do recommend it. And also, I remember it being a lot sweeter than what it smells like right now. I remember it smelling even more sweet, but maybe I'm wrong. Intense Cafe from Montal, a good scent with great longevity. It's just a little bit common nowadays, I would say. Oriana from Parfum de Mali. I am not surprised at all to see her here. Oriana is super popular amongst women, amongst TikTok, social media in general, but I definitely feel like TikTok, they love Oriana. And I can definitely see why. Out of all of the Love Don't Be Shy DNA fragrances, I think Oriana is definitely one of the best. It's definitely the, yeah, I would say the best executed out of all of those scents because sometimes with those sweet orange blossom combinations, sometimes the fragrance is just way too sweet or sometimes the orange blossom is like disturbing, like in the fragrance, like in Love Don't Be Shy. But in Oriana, it feels very well balanced, very well blended. What you have in Oriana is the orange blossom, you have a little bit of raspberry, you have some cream, some marshmallow. It definitely has this very smooth and silky marshmallowy note mixed with the orange blossom. It's very ultra feminine, like this is a super, super, super feminine fragrance. Very sweet. It definitely is a sweet fragrance, so it is something that I would personally consider to be a gourmand, but it's done well. It doesn't feel like food, it still feels like a fragrance that you want to wear, and it is really beautiful. I am just not the biggest fan of this orange blossom sweet kind of DNA. Like, if I'm gonna wear orange blossom, I want to wear orange blossom, something that is fresh and a little bit bitter and classic, like that's what I want to wear. I don't necessarily love those sweet orange blossom combinations, um, but I do like Oriana. I feel like I'm so indecisive in this video. I do think it's a good scent. It is definitely not my favorite feminine fragrance from Parfum de Mali at all, but I do like it. And sometimes from like time to time, I will have a craving to wear it. It's really strange. Like I will not want to wear the scent for months. And then one day I'm just like, I want to wear Oriana and then I'll go ahead and spray it on. So do I think it's worth it? Yes. Yes, I do think it's worth it. Longevity projection is also really good on the fragrance. For me, I get around seven hours with a minimal projection, but it's definitely not my favorite Parfum de Mali. It's definitely not my favorite scent in the world. But I do think if you are looking for a very feminine, kind of sweet, marshmallowy, very girly scent, you're going to fall in love with Oriana. And it definitely is one of the best sweet orange blossom scents on the market. So check it out if that appeals to you. 
It's not necessarily my taste, to be honest, but I do think it is a good scent. Vanilla 28 from Kayali. You guys should have expected this one because I would say this is definitely, definitely amongst one of the most viral fragrances on social media, Vanilla 28 from Kayali, especially on TikTok. And for a good reason, Mona Katan did such an incredible job launching this scent. It's such a versatile and just perfect vanilla fragrance in my opinion. I am all on board with this scent. I think it's absolutely fantastic. So what you have with Vanilla 28 is a very deep and ambery vanilla scent. You have vanilla, brown sugar, orchid, I don't even know what else, maybe a bit of tonka bean. And it's just, it's so good you guys. Like it, in terms of a vanilla fragrance, it really is fantastic for the price that you're getting for this scent, I really think it is worth it. It lasts on the skin for me, I get around seven hours of really good wear. It smells so good. It layers really beautifully with other scents. Like you can go Montal Intense Cafe uh, and Vanilla. You can do Vanilla and Devotion. You can do Vanilla and <clears throat> Angel Share from Killian. Like you can do a lot of different layering combos with Vanilla 28. And for me, I just think it is a staple in everyone's collection if you love Vanilla and you love Gourmands. It is fantastic. It's really worth it, especially because of the price. And I think it's a great scent. I really think it's a great scent. This one for me is a yes, 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 yes. If you ask me my opinion of Young Pistachio Gelato, whether I think it's worth it, unfortunately I would say no. But Vanilla 28, yes. Like, absolutely yes. As I am filming this video right now, Bianco Latte from Giardini di Toscana is probably the most hyped gourmand of the moment. Definitely the most hyped gourmand of the moment. And I have to, I have to be totally honest, I was definitely one of the last people to jump on board this train, but I have finally arrived and I'm so happy to be on board. Now, Bianco Latte. Oh my gosh, it's... Yes, like... Yes, 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 yes. Yes is all I have to say. Now, I, I told you guys already, I think, in a video, but I was so scared that all of the hype surrounding this fragrance was going to completely ruin it for me because I have I had such high expectations of the fragrance like I really wanted to smell it and for it to change my change my perspective on everything like I wanted to smell this fragrance and just have like angels shedding their lights onto my like I just wanted like a holy experience when I smelled the scent, although I don't think that the fragrance DNA is groundbreaking, it's never going to be. Like a vanilla fragrance is never really gonna have a groundbreaking DNA because it's already been done so much. Although it's not groundbreaking, I love it. Like I love it, you guys. I cannot tell you how much. It is currently sitting on my favorite shelf up here. It just smells so good. It's a very, airy, whipped, sweet vanilla. It's so good, you guys. It's vanilla, it's creamy. I don't even know how to describe it. It's just this gorgeous, fluffy and whipped, creamy vanilla scent. And I just, I love it, you guys. I absolutely love it. I am so happy that I have it. And one thing that I was not expecting from the scent, it is beast mode, you guys. Like I wear it because I'm wearing it so much these days. It lasts on my skin around the eight hour mark with a huge projection. People can smell you like 10 meters behind you. It has a huge projection on my skin at least. And I am just obsessed with the fragrance. It's super addictive. It's really cozy. It's the perfect fragrance for the fall and winter. It smells so yummy and cozy, cocooning, sweet, just everything. I am so happy to have it. Thank you guys for putting me onto this one. I love it and I definitely think it's worth it. Um, yeah, like I said, don't, don't, don't get this fragrance and think that it's going to be groundbreaking because you might not feel that way, which I didn't feel that way about the DNA. But if you love gourmands and you love those cozy vanilla fragrances that just make you feel so comforted, you're going to love Bianco Latte. Actually, I really like the house. I tried as well Bora Bora and I love that. As a tropical floral, it is stunning. 
Stunning, stunning, stunning. Okay, let's talk about one of the most popular girlies. It is Lira from Kazimurati once again. Like I said, guys, Kazimurati, very popular on TikTok. But Lira, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Lira, for me, is that perfect gourmand as well. It's that beautiful, kind of same contrast as Bake. That citrus spicy gourmand that I absolutely love. In Lyra, you have blood orange, caramel, you have some cinnamon, tonka vanilla. It is just fantastic. I love a gourmand fragrance that feels layered. Like it's not just flat, like it's not one dimensional. There is certain layers to the scent and that's exactly how I feel about Lyra. It has the blood orange, which you definitely feel. It has the cinnamon to bring that warm spice. You have the caramel, which brings the sweetness. I think there's tonka bean, I'm not even sure. And it's just fantastic, you guys. It's addictive. It's very just delicious. It's complex. It's a sort of scent that somebody's going to turn their head when you're wearing it and ask you what you're wearing because it has something very captivating about it. So for me, Lyra is an absolute yes. Longevity projection is fantastic. It lasts around on my skin eight hours with a minimal projection. I remember I told you guys that the reason that I stopped wearing this scent is because Pierre, when I first met him, we went to Sydney and he told me he hated what I was wearing and I was wearing Lyra. And whether I like to admit it or not, Pierre's opinion does influence me. Like if he tells me he really doesn't like a fragrance on me, which doesn't happen too often, but if he does, I'm deeply offended. Like I am deeply offended and I don't want to wear that scent anymore. So sometimes I just never, I don't even want to ask him what he thinks about my fragrance because I'm scared that he's going to demolish me. And French people are very particular. Like when they think something is good, they're like, it's not bad. Like as an Australian with like a British influence, whenever something is good, we're like, oh my God, it's so good. Whoa. And Pierre, when something is good, he's like, yeah, it's not bad. So I just stopped asking him his opinion actually of my fragrance and I leave him to comment about it himself. Next up we have Rouge Smoking from BDK Parfum. Now I wasn't sure, like I was trying to look, like I was trying to do a bit of research. I don't know which one is more of the popular gourmand out of Rouge Smoking or Velvet Tonka, but I would say it is Rouge Smoking, even though Velvet Tonka is also really, really popular and it's definitely sweeter than Rouge Smoking, but I would say in terms of popularity, it's Rouge Smoking. Now, I know that this is like, I don't know if I've even said it on my channel, but I am not the biggest fan of Rouge Smoking. It's not that I don't like the scent, because you can probably see from my bottle I have worn it, and I do like it, but I don't love it. I don't know if that really makes any sense. I do like it, like when I'm smelling it now, I'm like, yeah, that smells good. But I never really find myself wanting to wear Rouge Smoking. It's a beautiful cherry fragrance with some vanilla and heliotrope and almond. So it's very creamy. It's very a little bit powdery. It's cocooning. It's a cocooning cherry fragrance. But myself, when I wear cherry, I want it to be something punchy and sexy and mysterious and dark and like, I don't know, something like Duquesa, which has a, a really sexy edge to it. I don't want something as cocooning as Rue Smoking when I wear a cherry fragrance. I feel like that was such like a niche problem or like a niche situation that I just spoke about but anyways um Rouge Smoking is a beautiful cherry fragrance don't get me wrong it's very creamy and sweet and almondy and warm but it's just not my favorite like I cannot explain it to you guys ever since I discovered the brand my favorites were Gris Chanel first that was my literally my scent and then I started to fall in love with Passessoir. I really liked Bouquet de Hongri. And now I love the X-ray of Passessoir. I love, what else? Uh, vanilla Leather, uh, Ombre Saffrano. But Rue Smoking, I just never really found myself drawn to the scent at all. And I don't really know why. But that doesn't mean that it's not good. I would recommend this scent to anybody that loves a cherry almond combination and you want something kind of creamy and cocooning and powdery, like you want that very comforting scent, you're going to love Rue Smoking. Another thing I remember that disappointed me about the fragrance was the longevity and projection. I feel like on my skin, 
The scent only lasts around the five, six hour mark and then I don't really smell it as much anymore. But again, don't get me wrong, it's a nice fragrance, but it's just, I wouldn't say that it's necessarily the best one that I've tried, especially not from BDK. So Rouge Smoking, it's a good one, but it's not personally for me. Oh, this one is controversial, which we love. Changing Constance from Penhaligons. So actually, when this when I launched Minuit Demi, everybody said that Minuit Demi was a copy of Changing Constance, and I had never smelled Changing Constance in my life. And I will tell you guys something really quickly, which is actually a little bit of an anecdote that I've never spoken about before. On my brief before creating Minuit Demi, I wrote the scenario that I had in my mind, like a date night, something super sexy, like addictive, something alluring whatever. But I also wrote some of my favorite fragrances that I kind of like wanted to take a little bit of inspiration from. There was three and none of them were changing constants. There was Gourmand Coquine from Guerlain, Spiritus Sublevani also from Guerlain, and I think maybe a Killian. I don't remember the last one, but there was two Guerlains. Gourmand Coquine was like the number one that I wanted to, I wanted something like Gourmand Coquine, which you cannot even find anymore online or anything. And then there was two others, but Penhaligon's Changing Constance, I had never even smelled it. So when Minuit Demi launched and everybody said that they were the same, I ran out and I bought this bottle of it. This was exactly after I launched Minuit Demi. And I have to say, they smell really similar. Like I'm gonna tell you guys right now, they do smell similar, really similar. But honestly, if I take myself out of the equation, I'm not even joking to you guys right now. This is just my opinion. But if I remove my personal feelings towards the scents, Minuit de Me is much better actually. It definitely smells more refined. Like you feel the different layers of the fragrance. It is much more longer lasting than changing constants because Obviously, when everybody started to say that I copied this fragrance, I went out and I tested them both. I was so worried, I was stressing, and I tested them side by side. I was like, okay, Minuit Demi goes like this, Changing Constance goes like this, Minuit Demi lasts like this many more hours, blah, blah, blah. I was freaking out, you guys, but at the end of the day, you have to test them for yourself, but really, what I think is that Minuit Demi is much, much, much better, but... Minuit Demi is not viral on TikTok. It's not viral on TikTok, but Changing Constance is a pretty viral scent, I would say. And it's nice, like I said, it's kind of similar to Minuit Demi, but it feels more one-dimensional. Like it doesn't feel, I don't know, like it just, it doesn't do it for me. Something about Changing Constance, it's nice because of course it's similar to Minuit Demi, but I don't know, I just, I prefer Minuit Demi by far. Like for me, if you compare them side by side, they're not the same scent and also Minuit Demi is better in my opinion. So that's how I feel about the whole entire situation. And also I noticed that Armani, Giorgio Armani, they released a fragrance called Magenta Tanzanite. It's like the same as Minuit Demi, which I was wondering, did they copy the scent? Surely not, surely not. Maybe they copied my fragrance. That is it. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I have been filming for way too long, but it was such a fun video and I just wanted to talk about one of my favorite categories of scents, which is Gourmand fragrances. These are the most viral right now, along with another fragrance called Maison Mataha Escapade Gourmand. You guys need to all comment right now. Do I need to buy Escapade Gourmand? Do I need it? Because so many people love the scent. Everyone is talking about it. I cannot obviously find it in Dubai, but I feel like everyone loves this fragrance and I get, I'm get i getting FOMO. Just the way that I felt FOMO about not owning Bianco Latte, I feel that way about Escapade Gourmand. So tell me guys, do you think that I would like it? Actually, that's a super question. Do I need it? That's the more important question. Do I need Escapade Gourmand? Let me know. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.